Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's a football podcast. It's it it it's like a football podcast. It's just a lot shorter and with a lot less information. Um, obviously, there's been international games, international break, um, so no games to go through from last week. There are some movers and shakers at the respective clubs. Uh, but then there are only three games to predict for the coming week. So made for quite a quick um, podcast. Um, still, it's, it, you know, it's all there. All the football goodies are there. So uh, still well worth it. Before we get started with the football, please do consider like, share, subscribe and comment. Leave a review where you can leave a review. And uh, yeah, obviously the big one is share the podcast around. Uh, it really helps the podcast out, and it's a, like I say, it's a big help, so please do consider that one. Right, let's get started. Here we go. This is Cookie Cast Football Podcast. <laughs> Bit of a re- 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 rewind. Uh, welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to the re- another episode of uh, the Cookie Cast Football Podcast. Podcast. Um, yeah, we're uh, we're coming at you live with another football-based nonsense. Obviously, it's been a it's been a week or so. There's been international games which we didn't predict. So. We, we have, have no games to go, go through from a uh, from last week. Did anyone watch any of the game? Did anyone take anything from it other than the fact that England now just, because they get relegated in the Asian League, League now just play against sub-par teams that are not very good? And this was Harry Kane's plan all along. <laughs> <laughs> um, I watched a bit of the game uh, against uh, Lipson. No, not Lipson, Stein, not all of them. Finland. Finland. Um, but I didn't see any of the Ireland game because I was out having my tea. Well, the the, the smart money in the Ireland game would have been to back the two uh, the two English players to to borrow a phrase from another YouTuber. Use the Ireland setup like a set of training wheels. <laughs> yes, Declan Rice and Jack Grealish. Both on the score sheet for England in their Nations League win over Ireland. Too much consternation from uh, the Irish supporters. But enough of the England games. We're here to talk about the ins and outs of Middlesbrough, Hull and Nottingham Forest for this week. And we're going to start with the games that we have upcoming for you this weekend. Three in total. In fact, I can't lie, to, to dive into the games... We, we do, of course, have to do the admin side of things because people, people could be picking players to score goals that we didn't even know had joined or indeed left the respective clubs. Now, there is no, there is no such uh, dealings to go on from a Middlesbrough perspective. I have no ins nor outs to go through. But I believe there is a person that has left Nottingham Forest. Is that correct, Mr. Moore? That's right. I mean, I'm sure we all have him predicted to score against Liverpool. But unfortunately, Wangy Joe has left for Alangespor in uh, in Turkey. So yeah, damn it, I know. So, sorry, did, did you say it, or did you just like sort of bring up some sort of phlegm there? There's a, there's a whole lot of kind of things like a mini stroke. I think I had. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Wangy Joe, South Korea's finest. Um, when never was trying to win inside him. First one. Oh yeah. Come on. <laughs> there's only one but there's only one where we picked we did buy a lot of donkeys and it was the first one. Uh, yeah, he was he was the first one back, I think right near the end. Um yeah. Uh I don't I don't know where we bought oh we bought him from Toulouse, I think. So we were in France. But yeah, then immediately he went immediately out on loan. Um Bless him. Didn't kind of he's in that Josh Ball, uh, um, Omar, which has never really had a chance at the Forest. 
kind of thing. It was the padding out the squad to kind of take on the Premier League and waste money, really. Um, so, so, yeah. Gone. Off the books. Bit of money in the coffers. Maybe we sold it for 20 million. Like black like animals. But uh, who knows? It'll all be a positive on the balance sheet at the end of the day. So, so sadly, the name you will not hear on the podcast. We're not going to forest perspective anymore. Uh, but there is uh, a name that you will hear, hopefully, from a whole city perspective, I believe. Indeed. Uh, yeah, we picked up an out-of-contract player, uh, Stephen Alzate. So, formerly of Brighton, a bit, good bit of Premier League experience. He's a 26-year-old midfielder of Colombian descent. Um, yeah, uh, seems to be fairly attack-minded, which again fits with the system. Although I'm not sure how many more midfielders we need because apparently the like just who knows we might be playing one goalkeeper and ten midfielders by the amount of uh, stock that we've currently got. Um, but he instantly. Ticked the box for me because he scored the goal in a 1-0 win for Brighton and Liverpool, so that'll go. That, 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 that makes him good enough in my book, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I'm not sure he'll we'll necessarily play from the off this week because of him only just joining, but then similarly, if he's been out of contract, who's to say he's not been sort of lurking at training anyway? Um, yeah. And the, the, the official paperwork has gone through. Um we also had a contract extension, which I mentioned, for Timothy Waters of Tyler. Um, he's a, one of the sort of lower-ranked goalkeepers amongst the probably six that we've got. But um, interestingly, they've signed him on a deal until 2028, so that's either with a view to make a bit of money off selling him in the future, or they've actually realised that he's probably at least the number two, if not number three, maybe goalkeeper in the building. So, that, like, probably just a bit of insurance maybe in the background for when uh, stuff goes up uh, up in flames with some of their other signings. But, but, but we'll see. Um, just to tidy up a bit of loose end from the transfer window itself and slightly just after, a lot of speculation that we mentioned about possibly signing Liam Cooper. Uh I saw him locally at Beverly Races just after the transfer window was closed. Saw him actually at my boys' football training earlier this week and uh, has, on the day of recording this podcast, announced that he signed for CSKA Sophia. Probably not going to be playing for Hull anytime soon. You've got to applaud on. He likes to stay local. And what's more local than Bulgaria? So, um... <laughs> Strange, strange one for me. I think I, I, I don't think a lot of people would have had moves to move to Eastern Europe or Southern Eastern Europe on their uh, dance cards for Liam Cooper this summer. But well, probably, probably a few reasons why we didn't end up with him though, in the sense that they signed Hughes, they got Finn Burns on loan, and seemingly he's not a midfielder, so we clearly don't need him. So. Um, <laughs> done his homework, so, transfer in and out, done and dusted, which does bring us back to where I was trying to take us earlier on. So, the first of our team's three games this week is an early kick. No, it's not an early kick. I do apologize. It's a late kick off, but it's on a Friday evening. Um, I believe this, this isn't a Sky Sports Plus game. This is a Sky Sports regular full-on TV package deal. Games, is it not? On the Sky Sports Football. Oh, I wouldn't have said there in person. Well, well, well. It's Hull City versus Sheffield United. Uh, obviously, if it's Hull City team, he will give his prediction last. Uh, I'm going to come to Andy first off for his prediction for Hull City versus Sheffield United. What have we got down, sir? Three, three, four, five, one, no. Go, sorry. Badia. 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 Oh, did, did you ever get to the bottom of it, whether it's Badia or Bedia or, you know, it's probably pronounced like Trash, from all we know, to be honest with you. Well, 
we'll, we'll, we'll get, get to the bottom of it on Friday when I'm there for the stadium announcer to tell me how it's done because I haven't been at the stadium since he signed. So, very, very good, very good point. Uh, Matt, what have you got down for Hull versus Sheffield United? I've gone for a one all draw. I've also gone for Badia or Badia or Badia score. <clears throat> And, and uh, Paul Skinner as well, that would have been perfect. Oh. <laughs> then I've got, got dead complicated for uh, Sheffield United. Uh, keep them all. Um, I too have gone for a 1 1 draw. I've gone for a, a, a Bursto first uh, and Callum O'Hare to start for Sheffield United, which is please Mr. Woodensy give us his boys' prediction. Um, I have gone for Hull City 1, Sheffield United 2. Oh dear. Uh, I've gone for Casey Palmer to get off the mark. He's had the sort of part debut by coming on for a few minutes. So I reckon that monkey's off his back. He didn't need to score on his debut. But his, his home debut, we can pop one in. Um, for Sheffield United, I have gone for Raksaki. Because it's cool to say. And purely because he pissed us about in the summer and then fucked off to Sheffield, clearly going to score a goal against us, Keith I believe, I know, I know, I know it's not old boy rule technically, but I believe there was talk that Raksaki was between Hull and Sheffield United, wasn't he? For who was going to join on loan. Uh, it's not a name I'd heard until I actually saw him sat in the crowd at Bramall Lane, so I wasn't aware that that was a thing, but even more reason to pick him if that is the case. <laughs> yeah, quite, quite, quite. It's not, it's not all by rule, it's just shit housing bastards rule. Otherwise known as the Craig Bellamy rule. Um, so, our second hit takes us to Merseyside, where Liverpool will be taking on Nottingham Forest. Obviously, Mr. Moore's team, he will give his prediction last. Sadly, I have gone for a Liverpool 3-0 win here. I've gone for a brace of goals from Mohamed Salah, the goal of Yogo Jota. Shoe? Uh, I picked my own team to lose 2-1. Unfortunately for Matt, I picked his team to lose 2-1 as well. Um, I've... I think Forest seem to be in decent form, so I don't think that they'll go without scoring, uh, particularly seeing as Premier League hot shot Chris Wood is still uh, all over the place. So, um, to steal a lot of money, I've got Wood, and uh, like Paul, I've also got Jota, and just so he can Jota this one down in his book, Suppose I! <laughs> Assuming you said it, I was like, you son of a... I've probably put way too many Zs in that, but who cares? Why not? I'm, 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 I'm amazed that like, there's not been a story that Liverpool had to shut down production at the, the club shop or something they ran out of Zs and stuff like that, which has happened in the past at certain clubs. Uh, Andy, in more, more in case if somebody's gone, can you print it and nobody knows how to spell it and so nobody's told them it's wrong anyway? <laughs> Like 50 different shirts going around with all different kinds of spelling. Yeah. Like, why, why does that shirt say Gary on the back? It doesn't. It's got a silent G in it. It's still pronounced with the dollar like, It's fine. <laughs> uh, Andy, what have you got down for the Liverpool Forest? So, I mean, I, I love this game. Like, obviously, the, the, the smart money is probably put the Liverpool down for all games. But nobody has ever accused me of being smart. So instead, I've decided that the Forest are going to do what they need to do is get a 1 0 win. And to do that, they're going to get their wood out all over them. So, uh, 1 0 with wood to score, please. I think we can, I think we can say to say that if that was, if that was to be the case, there'd be a lot of happy people. Not just in this podcast, but across. The, the wider, wider world. Um, dare I ask how you see this one going down? I, <clears throat> I still don't know if I've got a point of share this with the group. Uh, Chris Wood is currently in America playing for New Zealand. 
and plays at midnight tonight. So will be on his way back. Um, but jet lag. Fuck, might be the uh, phrase you might use on Saturday. Um, I've gone for a Liverpool three-one win. I've also got Diego Jota. Um. I've kind of gone with ex managers favourite Chappie kind of thing, because I think Nuno like, absolutely loved him when he was at Wolves. And Salah for two, because he seems to have, since he's been to Turkey and got some hair back, he seems to have really yeah, kind of started to perform like he is, was 26 kind of thing, you know, like, uh, um, thing. And then I've gone, old boy rule, I've got a one year to score. Hopefully we can kind of recapture a bit of something. There you have it, which just leaves us with my boys, Middlesbrough, taking on Preston North End. Obviously, it's my team, so I will go last. So let's let's carry on the theme. We'll go to Matt for his prediction for the Borough versus PA. I've gone for a Borough 2-1 win. Uh, Latte Lap and Conway. And keen to score for Preston. Roy's brother. Definitely not. Andy! Well, I have a Middlesbrough 2 0 win. Lovely. Last I last to score the first of the two goals, and my favourite Middlesbrough player, the dog. Again, the name we have already heard as a scorer this season. Stu? I have a mixture of those two. I have a Middlesbrough 2 1 win. I have Keane for Hull City um, to score for Preston. And I've got Conway, as Matt suggested, and Bergdorf, as Andy suggested. Very nice. Um, I also have gone for a 2 1 for a win. I also have Bergsog, but I've gone with Finn Azaz to score for a And Old Boy Rule is technically in effect here as a present signed Sam Greenwood on loan for the season. And I think he scored in the cup against Harrogate earlier in the season. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him score and go straight into full shit house mode. Shall we say no more? That brings us to the end, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a, a, a rather short one. Short and sweet for you this week. Obviously, there was no games to predict or to go through from last week. Um, Does there be uh, anything else I'd like to, to, to bring up at this point of the recording? No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In, in that case, you, you can all go home early, lads. Lovely oh, stuff. You're, you're, you're very welcome. welcome. Thank, Thank you, as always, to these two gentlemen for joining me to go through the, deal, uh, the details and the ins and outs of their team's goings-on. Thank, Thank you to you, the, uh, the wonderful listening and watching public. Obviously, if you're around here, follow us uh, you know, next week, where we'll shop it up again for you and bring you some Borough Forest and the Tigers news. But until then, take care of yourselves. Keep an eye for each other, and we'll see you all next week. Happy bye for now. So there we go, what do you think to that? Very quick and to the point, the way it should be. The way it it, it, it always is. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, thank you for being a part of this one. Uh, before you go, if you want to uh, keep up to date with the podcast, get all the updates for episodes and the like, do consider like, share, subscribe and comment. Leave reviews where you can leave reviews. There are a variety of different places you can review a podcast uh, and they help the podcast out. And finally, check out the website, thecookiecast.com. There we have some social media links and an email button and that way you can get in touch with us. That is it for this one. Until next time, I'm going to say bye and I'll see you then. Thank you for listening to these grumpy old men talk about football. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like, share and subscribe.